Well, it's gonna be nice to talk about some Phillies baseball again. Yo, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Philly Sandstill video cast. Today, we're going to have another episode of the Philly Sandstill Online. And it's going to be weird to talk about some Phillies baseball. I haven't talked about, uh, you know, Phillies baseball uh, probably about, you know, two weeks or so. And I guess before I get into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please share the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. And let's get into this. Of course, as you might know, I've been very, very busy covering the 2021 postseason. Uh, so I haven't really had much time to really talk about, you know, Phillies baseball, right? I mean, they've gone, you know, over some changes, right? You know, with hiring a new hitting coach and Kevin Long. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of that hire. Uh, hopefully I can talk a little bit about that. I think one of the questions we got this week is a question about Kevin Long. So I'm excited to talk a little bit about that. So if you want an opportunity to call into Philly's Hot Stuff Videocast, you can call 267-225-3392. Let me repeat, 267-225-3392. You can find this in the description section, right? Uh, so to leave a voicemail, wait to hear the tone, then state your name, where you're calling from, your question, and your opinion about any Philly stat. Because if you do not feel comfortable calling the number, you can record yourself on a voice memo and send that voice memo in the MP3 file to phillysidesdove at gmail.com. You can find us all in the link in the description section. If you do not want your voice on the show, you can DM me on Instagram at phillysidesdove at harperfanatics. Or you can write that message and text it to 267 Or you can email it to phillyshotstove at gmail.com. Same rules apply uh, to state your name, where you're texting from, question and your opinion about any Phillies topic. So let's get into this uh, Phillies Hotstove Outline. Right? It's been a couple weeks. I think the last one we did of the Phillies Hotstove Outline was in the regular season. Uh, so let's uh, go to the first caller of the day here, uh, Ethan calling from Seoul, New Jersey. So let's go check in with him. What's up, Luke? It's Ethan calling from Seoul, New Jersey. And before I ask, I just got to say, what an interesting Philly season this was. I mean, even though we didn't make the playoffs, we still managed to finish the season with a winning record, second place in the National National League East. <clears throat> We could have done we could have done that better definitely, but I'm at least happy for the Phillies for finally breaking that route. Anyway, to my question: Now that we are officially in our we're officially in the off season, um, <clears throat> aside from pitching, what needs to happen? What other position players do we need for us to be a successful team and hopefully make the playoffs next year? And do you think Dave Dombrowski will do a good job this off season? And, uh, yeah, great job this season, Luke. Bye-bye. I appreciate the kind words, Ethan. Uh, means a lot, right? I mean, you know, you're one of the top commenters on this channel. I mean, throughout the 2021 season, uh, you were a really, really big supporter. So I'd like to thank you so much for your support. Now, to answer your question, right? I mean, uh, just going back to your statement you made about the Phillies finishing over 500. Let me just talk about that a little bit because I think it's important to talk about. As I talk about, you know, towards the end of the season, I'm not really going to, you know, go on a limb and say that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, sure, we finished with a ringing record. I mean, it's not a free ticket to the postseason not a get-out-of-jail-free get card for this team. It's not a get-out-of-jail-free card for Dave Gombrowski, president of baseball operations, right? Uh, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, so I'm not really going to put, you know, much stock in it. I don't think, you know, Ethan was putting much stock into it either. This was, you know, making a general statement. Is it an accomplishment? I guess, yeah, I, guess. I wouldn't say it's too much of an accomplishment. But to answer your question, right, I mean, to answer your question, aside from pitching, right, I mean, especially in that bullpen, it needs a lot of help. But to answer your question, I think the biggest need for this Phillies team offensively has got to be an everyday center fielder a legit everyday center fielder uh and if and david gombrowski has to tackle that i wonder if that's a guy like starling Marte, which i think you know would make sense with the phillies right i mean it's a shame that the development of adam hazley didn't work out uh that would have been great uh it's really really a shame that you know he had all these injuries and then the personal issues off the field i completely understand i understand what he was going for but it's a shame it didn't work out right i mean it's, it's definitely a shame it didn't work out so i think star a guy like Star my team makes some sense, and also just not just one guy. We need to add more complimentary players. And Dave Gombrowski summed it up perfectly in his press conference to end off the season. Right, I was struggling all year to put words again about what really was going wrong. Right, I mean we all knew it was going wrong, but I mean it wasn't just one big thing. It was a lot of different things, a lot of different holes, a lot of different places. 
And Dan Garbowski summed it up perfectly in his end of the season presser when he said, we don't have enough complimentary players, which was an excellent way to put it. And it's true, we do not have enough complimentary players, right? We had these big core pieces, these big structures, uh, you know, like Bryce Harper, and like JT Mucho when he's on a good year, you know, Redick Reese Hoskins, you know, Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola when he's on. Uh, right, I mean, it just we have these core structures in place, and we don't have enough other structures around them to complement them. Right, I mean, that's an excellent way to put it. So I don't really think it's just one big guy, but there's a lot of work Dave Dombrowski has to do this all season. I do trust Dave Dombrowski to answer your question. Build a championship in Boston, with you know, in 2018, right? And the Red Sox are still kind of benefiting, uh, you know, from his choices. Right, and, you know, making a run in another World Series right now. As I speak, they have a 2-1 lead over the Houston Astros. The Red Sox are still. You Know, reaping some of the benefits from Dave Gombrowski, right? Of course, Moogie Betts isn't there anymore, but you know, some of the moves of Dave Gombrowski are still impacting the Boston Red Sox right now. Um, so I think that's very interesting to bring up. He did it when he's with the Florida Marlins as well. So I, I do trust Dave Gombrowski, right? I mean, he's a proven winner. Uh, he's been in baseball for a very long time. He knows what he's doing. Uh, but uh, I mean, I'm not going to say I was overly impressed with his first year in Philadelphia. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm going to give everybody a second chance, right? He came in pretty much midway through the offseason last year. He kind of came in late. So this year, there's really no excuses, right? I mean, he's going to have a full offseason. He already had a bit of an offseason last year to make an impression. Now he's really going to be able to make an impression. So I expect a lot. We're going to go to our second caller here. Uh, so it's calling him from City Field, I think. So let's go take a look at what he has to say. We're live from City Field. Lindor owns the Yankees. Extend Baez. Let's go Mets. We're winning the World Series next year. I believe that was a Mets fan calling in. Uh, but this, the voice did sound familiar, though, right? The voice definitely did sound familiar. Just to kind of talk about the Mets since the you know Mets caller did call in here, uh, definitely a collapse, right? And they, they literally had the NL East pretty much won, right? I mean, at least in their eyes, they didn't. They just completely fell apart, right? You know, Lindor had an injury-prone year. He didn't have a good year at all. Uh, Lindor definitely had a struggle season. Um, so they, I'm sure the Mets are looking for him to bounce back next year. Uh, and the Yankees will always be the top dog in New York, right? I mean, you just saw they just extended, uh, you know, Aaron Boone for three years, which I kind of thought was a kind of a surprising move, uh, judging because I don't really think he's done that great of a job with the Yankees. Sure, they, always, they made the playoffs all the years that he's been there, uh, but I really haven't been all that impressed. Uh, but uh, there's no question that uh, the Mets, going back to the Mets, the Mets are always going to be the underdog in New York. There's no question about that. Even though the Yankees haven't had a lot of postseason success over the last decade, I still give the Yankees more credit than I do the New York Mets, right? And non-biased aside, I mean, the Yankees have had better success. They've had way better success than the Phils as well. Um, so, uh, you know, of course, you know, over their franchise history. Uh, but of course, they're still making the playoffs. The Phillies are not. Uh, you know, the Mets haven't made the playoffs since 2016. They got, you know, limited game of elimination. That 2016 long card game against the San Francisco Giants. Uh, so the Mets haven't really had a whole lot of postseason success either. Of course, the Mets, uh, you know, had the most recent you know, World Series appearance in the Yankees right in 2015 when they lost uh, in five games to the Kansas City Royals. Uh, but uh, the Mets, it's going to be interesting to see what they do as well. Steve Cohen, right? I mean, you know, he came in, you know, last offseason. This year, he's going to have a full offseason to assert himself as the new owner of the New York Mets, right? I, mean, I thought he was going to do it last year, but now he's going to have a full offseason. And Steve Cohen's the kind of guy, when he gets frustrated, he goes out and just goes all out, right? So I do see the Mets probably having a big offseason. I think everybody always says that every year just because they're in New York and they're at a big market and they can spend money. And, of course, you know, they're not owned by the Wilpons anymore. Uh, but, uh, you know, Steve Cohen definitely, I could definitely see him, uh, you know, going off this offseason, right? He's definitely a frustrated guy right now, especially after the season uh, that his team had. I'm going to go into another person asking a question, right? I mean, they did not call. Uh, they did leave a, uh, a text uh, to the hotline number. They did not say their name uh, or where they were texting from, but they asked, what do you make of the new Kevin Long uh, signing, right? I mean, of course, I think they meant hiring, but it, it's fine. I mean, uh, I like it. I, I really, really like it, right? I mean, Kevin Long, a guy that worked with stars like Juan Soto, like Anthony Rendon. He worked with Bryce Harper in 2018, um, right? I mean, he has a, you know, another guy that has a lot of proven success, right? And of course, he's with Joe Girardi when they were with the New York Yankees and that, you know, that coaching staff over there. 
Uh, so this is the guy who's had a lot of success. He's helped develop a lot of baseball stars, right? When he arrived in Washington in 2018, Anthony Rendon was one of the best third basemen in baseball. He made Anthony Rendon the best third baseman in baseball. Uh, the best third baseman in baseball. Anthony Rendon had an amazing 2018 and even a better 2019 campaign. When Anthony Rendon left Washington, he was on the top of his game when he went to the LA Angels, right? Of course, like now he had an injury prone season. I, I hope baseball's given up on it. I have, you know, not lo you know lost any confidence in Rendon, but that's totally on topic. But Kevin Long, you know, he worked with you know guys like Juan Soto. Of course, he was there you know, since Juan Soto started his career. I mean, Juan Soto really he loves Kevin Long, right? I mean, he went to Dodger Stadium just a couple weeks ago in that wild card game to turn on you know Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. So uh, they have a good relationship. I mean, Kevin Long, he's again like, like I just said, he has a you know proven track record of success. You know, working under Dave Martinez's staff over the past four years uh, winning that World Series in 2019 this is a guy I'm very very happy to see uh, you know as the hitting coach right I mean it's very very interesting too I mean Joe Dillon uh, you know, our old hitting coach was the assistant hitting coach under Kevin Long from 2018 to 2019. Uh, so he was the assistant, and of course now we hire Kevin Long. And, and Tim Kelly, friend of the button, made a great point. I think this was him. He said, why are you going to hire Kevin Long? Right? Joe Dillon, the old hitting coach, is kind of just a protege of Kevin Long. And he makes a good point. I mean, they're, come, they're cut from the same cloth, and it makes sense. Of course, you know, Joe Dillon was Kevin Long's assistant. Uh, I mean, there's a, good, there's a good argument there. Uh, like I just said, they're cut from the same cloth, but Kevin Long, I mean, he was the guy, right? I and mean, he was the guy. When he was the inning coach, he was the guy, right? He de helped develop a lot of young stars. Like I said, Juan Soto, right? He worked with Rendon. He worked with Harper in 18, right? He got Bryce Harvick, you know, slumping really badly in the first half of 2018. He went back in the second half and changed his swing. He had an all-star second half to his 2018 campaign. I'm a big fan of the Kevin Long hire, right? And in his press conference, it, makes, it was kind of funny. He said, there's talk maybe Joe Dillon comes back as the assistant hitting coach, right? I mean, Joe Dillon, our old hitting coach, you know, was let go, and now he might come back as the assistant hitting coach. So that'd be kind of funny, right? He goes from hitting coach to assistant hitting coach. Uh, so that'd be kind of funny, right? And of course, as I just said, with Washington, Joe Dillon was Kevin Long's assistant hitting coach. So uh, I'm a big fan of this iron, right? It was funny because he was still employed with the Nationals. Of course, he talked about it with, you know, Mike Rizzo, GM and president of the Nats, you know, he used to, you know, talking with them, and they couldn't negotiate a contract, right? I mean, we all know things are not going too well in Washington, D.C. with the Nationals right now, right? You know, they're coming off of a terrible season, uh, but they lost in almost 100 games. And I think Evan Long might, might have thought that maybe his job was in danger. Uh, you know, of course, we all know it's not his fault, but, you know, the coaches are always getting the blame for, you know, team struggles. So I think he has better job security at the Phils. You know, he's clearly making more money, so it's kind of cool, right? Of course, he had to get permission from the Washington Nationals to do this. Uh, it's kind of funny though, you know, a couple years ago when the Yankees were trying to find a new manager, uh, they tried to talk to Bob Melvin at Oakland Athletics when he was still employed there with the Athletics as a manager, and the Athletics would not let them. So it's not just, you know, free, you know, passes to talk to the other clubs when you're still employed with a current club. So it was nice of Mike Rezzo, GM and President, and asked to do that. I'm sure he thought that the end was near when that discussion came up. So I'm a big, big fan of this hire. So thank you guys for all the questions this week. Of course, there are only like three, but I really had to talk about you know, Kevin Long. I wanted to make a video about the Phils as well. Uh, so hope you all enjoyed, right? So just to wrap it up here, if you want an opportunity to be on Philly Sats at Videocast, you could call 267-225-3392 in the description section. You know, state your name, your question, and your opinion about any Phillies topic. Because also, you know, state you know where you're calling from as well. So you can also just text it at 267 Just you know, type in your name where you're texting from. Question and opinion about any Phillies topic. DM me Phillies Hot Stove, Harper Fanatics on Instagram. Email me PhilliesHotStoveGmail.com. You can do all that kind of stuff. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please share, notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. To other social media, link of Scoops of Six, at Phillies Ask of Instagram, TikTok, under of Instagram, call or text 267 225 3392. Email me, Phillies to event gmail.com. Uh, so I'll see you next time for the series recap, either for the uh, National League Championship Series or the American League Championship Series, right? The, the National League Championship Series is surprising me, right? The Braves are the two elite. I did not see this happening. Uh, so maybe the Braves upset the Dodgers like they did with the Brewers. Uh, you can't say this is not an upset. So guys, since you're watching, I'm looking, I'll talk to you later. I'll see you later.